Hi, welcome to the Bell Performance Video Blog. I'm Eric Bjornstad, and today we're going to talk about gas prices. Specifically, why gas prices have spiked in the last month. Earlier this summer, we did a blog post at the Bell Blog where we talked about the opposite effect. The fact that gas prices uh, at the beginning and then early part of summer, when they normally would be rising because of increased demand, they weren't rising, they were actually falling. Now, uh, that's great for consumers. Uh, that's great for us taking you know, summer road trips. But you know what were the reasons why this happened to you? You can check out the Bell blog to see what we had to say about that. Well, now we are kind of paying the piper. Not necessarily because the, the gas prices now are related to the fact they were lower then, but because we're, we're starting to pay uh, the uh, gas prices that we might have expected to pay earlier in the summer. So uh, why is it that gas prices... Uh, are rising right now. Well, we're going to talk about the four different factors that are contributing to the spike. Now, how much of a spike are we talking about? Well, gas prices do vary according to where in the country you are. If you're out in Hawaii, you always pay the highest gas prices. California prices are typically higher than they are in Louisiana. But it's pretty much constant across the board that relative to what you normally pay, gas prices have gone up maybe 25, 30 cents since uh, the, in the last five to six weeks. At the end of June, they had reached their bottom in terms of nat uh, national gas price average was about 3.39. Now it's about 30 cents higher, it's 3.69 and it's finally eclipsed what it was last year. So, the question is why are gas prices rising? Well, first of all, one thing it's not due to is it's not due to demand. Demand is typically higher in the summer, but analysts will tell you that this summer has been relatively low when it comes to demand. Now, maybe our habits are changing. Maybe what the environmentalists really wanted as far as changing behaviors of Americans, maybe a little bit of that's coming to, to, to pass this past year. People aren't driving as much. They're not burning as much gas. The demand for the gas has been relatively low. So that is one thing that is not driving the uh, rise in gas prices, but the biggest thing that's rising in the gas prices is an interruption in the supply and distribution capacity. Specifically, the Richmond refinery owned by Chevron out in California, second largest refinery in the state of California, refines and supplies about 15 to 16 percent of all of the gasoline out on the west coast. Well, in the first week in August, we'll say August the 5th, but you can Google it if you want the exact date, they had a fire. And this fire severely damaged the crude oil refining section of that website, of, the, of that refinery, excuse me, severely damaged the crude refining part of the refinery such that they had to shut it down. And they're thinking that this part of the refinery is going to stay shut down for the next four to six months. So you have a major part of the production arm for gasoline out on the west coast is out of commission. That caused an immediate spike in gas prices. Now that's not the only place in the US where they've had problems. Uh, the uh, Midwest pipeline goes up to Green Bay and Chicago area, supplies a lot of the gasoline up in those major metropolitan areas. Well. That had a number of leaks and uh, uh, just problems with it in the last month. That caused a 25 cent spike in the gas price in just one week up in the Chicago Midwest area. Uh, and then you have oil prices. Okay, now generally speaking, we all know that oil prices are closely linked to gasoline prices, or should we say gasoline prices closely follow oil prices? If you look at a uh, graph of, for any time period, a graph of the gas prices of the national average and then gas price, excuse me, oil prices for crude oil, you can see that they pretty much follow the same pattern. And that's true whether you're talking about the national or whether you're talking about, you know, if you're in a certain part of the country. Um, one thing we noted was uh, whether you're looking at LA or New York or Miami. Uh, they, they, if you look at, say, the last 18 months and the way the gas prices go up and down and the pattern that it follows, 
they all follow pretty much the same pattern. Some are a little bit more volatile than others. If you look at the gas prices for Los Angeles, it follows the same pattern as Miami does, but it's more volatile in that you've got a, it's going like this a lot more, whereas uh, uh, Miami's is kind of going more like that, you know, more of a smooth line. But anyway. Refineries on the East Coast. Okay, you had a you had a fire out on the West Coast. You had problems with the Midwest. Well, the East Coast faced its own problem because crude oil prices were rising. Specifically, the crude oil from the North Sea. Uh, it's called Brent crude. That's the industry term for it. And what they found is that uh, the traders, the the oil speculators, the people who who buy uh, what they call oil futures. Uh, they have been uncertain about what the world economy is going to be like, and they have been uncertain about how much production is actually going to come out of the North Sea. And so what they've been doing is they have been bidding up the prices. You know, it's a supply and demand type thing. The, the prices for the lots of crude coming out of the North Sea are going up in price simply because of the demand for them due to uncertainty of the future. And so... East Coast refineries that like to use that kind of oil to make gasoline, they're having to pay higher prices, and so they're getting socked with that too. So, these factors, uh, refinery, uh, or excuse me, refining capacity and problems in all areas of the country. If you talk to analysts about what's driving these oil prices, uh, oil price uh, uh, rises, they'll say that two-thirds of it, two-thirds is this distribution problem. Now, one third of it is rise in ethanol prices. Now we've done a number of blogs on all things ethanol. And, uh, a few weeks ago, we did one talking about uh, ethanol producers and the fact that they have been getting squeezed and finding it more more difficult to be profitable because of the lack of a tax incentive. Well, we we typically will get every so often we'll get somebody from the ethanol industry who will post a comment saying. You guys don't know what you're talking about, um, and yada, yada, yada. And we, we even had one of those comments here on one of the video blogs. Uh, this fact, you know, if somebody comes back and says, you guys don't know what you're talking about, ethanol price has got nothing to do with it, well, they're going to have to, you know, it, it's out there, uh, out on the internet for anyone to see. And, you know, just, just do a simple Google search. The drought is affecting uh, the corn harvest. Uh, it takes about 42% at last count of the ethanol harvest, excuse me, excuse me, of the corn harvest to make the ethanol that's required in our gasoline. The corn harvest is going to be way down this year. This is causing uh, the, the bushel price of corn to rise. This is causing what they call ethanol futures. The, uh, the contracts, uh, traders on the stock floor, New York Stock Exchange or whatever, they bid on how much they're going to be able to buy uh, ethanol production in the future, what they call ethanol futures. Before June, or rather I say before the end of June, uh, you could buy an ethanol future for about $2 per gallon. Now, it's $2.60, 30% higher, 60% excuse me, 60 cent swing. And that's the ethanol that's going into the gasoline. So, uh, talk to industry analysts like Tom Closa. He's he's often cited. He's he's one of the prominent ones at OPIS. Uh, he'll say that uh, the rise in ethanol prices uh, are as much responsible for as much as six cents just by themselves in the rise of gasoline. So about twenty-five to thirty-three percent of the rise in the gasoline prices strictly due to the rise in ethanol prices. So, what's the outlook? Well, <clears throat> given that summer's ending, uh, and you would expect gas prices to fall because demand's going to be falling. But, we just said earlier that demand isn't really driving these price hikes. Demand has already been down. So, when demand goes down even more, I mean, you may get a little bit of reduction, but I wouldn't think that we're going to see much relief just simply from transitioning from summer to winter, especially when these refineries have to take that little short time period to change over from producing summer blend fuel to winter blend fuel. Unfortunately, the analysts think that these prices are going to be around for a little while because that refinery out in California is still going to have issues getting that uh, a refining module, so to speak, back up online. So, unfortunately, 
we may have seen the last of the low gas prices you know, for at least a little while. Hopefully later in the winter they'll recover. Um, so anyway, that's been the Bell Performance blog for today. And uh, thank you very much for joining me. If you'd like more information on this and other topics, we have a couple of excellent websites at www.bellperformance.com and an, ed- an excellent ed- educational website, uh, www.wefixfuel.com. Again, thanks for joining me today, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.